Happy New Year to uh, everybody from Ghost Aquariums. Um, this is a bit of a different one. I haven't planned to do this one. This is kind of an update and a, bit, a little bit of a tour, not too much, and, and kind of what we're in store for in 2024. Obviously, more subscribers would be great, and so big thanks to all those subscribers. I think I've got 1,421 as of this video, so hopefully I'll get more. A um, uh, bit of a partnership, and that with uh, Frenzy Fish Feed. So we've talked about that recently. Great Australian company. I use it uh, all the time. And before I uh, got involved with them, I was buying it from them. So I love the stuff. Um, some great sizes. They're coming out with a new size now. They've asked me to try. We're going to do a video on that very shortly. It was the 0.4, 0.6 millimetre. Fry starter. It's tiny. So you know that where you go from, uh, like, yeah, uh, well, I go for micro food I make. And then you've got to try to go to the, the, the Daphne or the baby brine shrimp and that. Let's be honest, that all costs a bloody lot of money now. You do your own brine shrimp, that's good, but you buy frozen food, costs a lot of money. If you can buy a few kilo of this, I tell you what, there it is right there. I hope you can pick up on it. All right, but that's great food. Uh, there will be a code in the descriptions uh, down the bottom, but is Ghost 10. You put in Ghost 10 on their website and you'll get 10% off. Alright, so, yeah, there's a few good things happening this year. I want to concentrate on uh, trying to get my goldfish breeding going a lot better. It used to be able to be great because we used to get spring, summer and that, but at the moment the weather is that stuffed up and... We're supposed to get smashed for summer. The, the top part of Australia is getting uh, smashed with water at the moment. So for all my good friends up there, my heart goes out to you, and I hope the flooding subsides soon and all gets back to normal, and hopefully the government give you a lot of help. So, yeah, my heart goes out for you. Um, but then you go into the New South Wales area, and they're getting smashed with heat with Perth. South Australia, She's wished to have days in the in the, in the twenties, low twenties, and then you know today's only about thirty-two. Tomorrow and the two next days about thirty-six. So the spawner mocks are in. Let's hope something happens there, um, because I'm getting spawns, but they're not big spawns, and um, really need that warmer weather, water changes, smash the food in them, get some blood worms into them, um, but the weather just isn't getting hot enough. And sometimes my tanks here aren't uh, that a lot. While I'm talking to you right here, I will just, uh, one of my uh, ones that I use for breeding here, uh, so I've got 22 degrees there. So that's Really, I don't think Goldies are that interested, less than 20. But that's 22, that might get something happen. But they gotta be, they gotta be hotter than that to really get goldfish, really want to spawn all the time. Um, I'm starting to get to the stage where I'm just getting too much happening here at the moment. I've gotta retire so I can do this all the time. I can't tell my wife about that though. Um, but I'm breeding a lot of different sorts of stuff now. Um, Cory cats, a lot of peppers, some pandas. I've just pulled out a heap of uh, rummy nose tetras. They are up there, I might be able to show them to you in a minute. Um, I also want to get into growing plants out the top of the aquariums and ponds and stuff like that a lot more. Um, because I use 12 volt lighting, any of you watch some of my past videos, please go back to it and you'll see that I run a big battery bank, so I use a lot of 12 volt lights for that. I have put a couple up on the shed roof, I'll show you in a minute. They have made a difference to the plants reaching up. So I'm gonna install a few more of those. Um, 12 volt 
they're the floodlights, uh, crawl lock -like floodlights. And yeah, so I can run them off my battery bank and I can have as many of those all I want, so it doesn't matter to the electricity bill, which keeps my wife happy anyway. Um, uh, what else are they? Yeah, so I'll take that camera in a minute and we're going to have a look. I'm building a wall of plants along this section. So when the water comes up and filters through where I hold a lot of the fry for the goldfish, it'll help take out all the nitrates and ammonia and all the good yucky stuff that we don't want and gets back some nice um, clean water for them. And it looks great. People walk in the shed and go, oh, this is amazing, you know. But I want plants up bigger and higher and growing more. A um, couple of the tanks there, I've disturbed them with mops, so they might be a bit cloudy. I've got to do the filters in the next few days, so don't be too disturbed when I show you around. A couple of the tanks are only a little bit dirty because, um, yeah, I've disturbed them by removing the mops out and putting new mops in this morning. And what else are we going to talk about? I won't take it outside, but I might do that in another video. The uh, as I said once again, those who have watched any of my videos have seen that I've got an outside area. Um, I've just brought some fish in, uh, future breeders, and put in this morning. Um, so, uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Let's have a little look around. So, I'll grab this. So, uh, as you can see, they're the lights that I use. You got a fluoro light, but these still run off, the fluoro lights still run off that battery bank over there because I've got a 3000 watt inverter. And you see some of these plants, look at that. I've got a nursery just around the corner from me. Only 20 bucks for that. How good's that? If you live in South Australia, hit me up and I'll tell you where they are. No need if you're interstate or... <laughs> You're in another country, so but hit me up if you are. Some of these ones. This is a wall. So this is a wall I'm planning to build along here. Let me get a better look this way back. Like that. So when the water comes through the pipes and the biofilter and everything here and comes up and goes back through, runs back and runs into there. That filters this absolutely beautiful. That that water, you, you feel like you could just drink it. Not that I would, but um, yeah, and that filters back through there and goes back through the biofilter and all that. But the plants, you, you've got to have plants. I picked up this one my wife found for me the other day too. I've never seen that one before. What's the name of that? It's a dwarf philodendron. It's a little bit different. Um, yeah, so it's it's hard doing the video sometimes because I get uh, comments. People say, I want to see more plants. I want to see more plants. And people say, I want to see more goldfish. Do you do tropical and that? Because I do so many different things, it's hard to show everybody everything at once. But, uh, yeah, so we got the... Uh, have a look at them coloured up, the uh, rosy barb males. They're full on in breeding mode at the moment. There's loads of them in there. Well, I have to get a couple of swordtail females out so their babies don't get predated on there. Peppercories love being in there. They smash out the eggs. I've stopped actually taking some out because I'm breeding so many. This is a little project that I've got going now. I don't know how well it's working. I have got uh, some 24 karat gold females in with some uh, red tail gold snake skin and they've been crossed so we'll wait to see how they turn out like blue musco as we know they're flying along so am I 24 karat gold and my super reds finally are putting on some size and doing well peppermints in there they're um, some, uh, what are we getting there? We've got some gold barbs, um, some uh, gold white uh, cloud minnows and some uh, 
albino quarries, there's some uh, yellow shrimp in there, there's some bronze quarries in there too and some white cloud minnows. Um, I said I forget what the hell was happening half the time. Now we have got green shrimp to burn in here and we have my marbles. Look at that. The marble placos. They've done really well for me. The spawns aren't big yet because they're not old. Stir boys haven't gave up anything yet, I think. I've only got five in there. So I'm assuming I need to get hold of, say, another three more and drop in there. This shrimp, it's like a wild tiger colour. I'll put it aside over there just to see what happens. There's a breeding lot of flies in there. Um, I have got so many mystery so yellow mystery snails. Uh, Geely eyes. Oh, look. There's a good look. King tiger placos are out. They like to hide a bit. They don't come out all that often. I've had them for a little while now, so they could, I'm not sure their age. I'll have to check on when I brought them and how old they possibly would have been. Yeah. So, haven't had much luck. These are four adult um, albino plecos in here. And yeah, they're not, I missed the last one. When I when I see them hatch, I'm going to have to get them out like I do the rest because they're not uh, raising their fry at all. They must be predating on them. All the guppies are. Red-tailed gold snake skin in there. Low, just literally hundreds inundated with um, bloody mystery snails. Common bristle nose in there. Now, my rummy nose... I'm pretty sure the Bosman Eye Marnie uh, rainbow fish aren't the ones spawning, I'm pretty sure. They're too young, I would think. I'm pretty sure it's a rummy nose tetras. And there is, oh, there's the adult, adult where they seem to hide away a little bit, but I need to get a few more of those as well. Goodness gracious, too much happening. That's me uh, sunset variatus platy that escaped everything. That's a uh, own bred little fighter female. Um, but in here, you're not going to see them because I only put them in the last week and some today. Um, little tiny, I believe, they come from that mop that they must be rummy nose babies. Must be. And there is a couple of babies in here, Whoop, zipping around there. And that come out of the crimson rainbow and the empire gudgeon tank. So I'm going to have to wait they grow up to see what's what. There's my pandas. Don't everybody loves pandas? Everybody loves pandas. So that's what's happening in this corner. I think there's a couple of baby um, uh, rosy barbs in there. And these are my beautiful. There you go, Rancho Breeders in there. Haven't done anything. Because the weather has been so cool and these ones that are on the concrete, you know, they're staying too cool for them. It needs to be warmer. Rogans, they've got the couple of spawns for me. Nothing spectacular. Look at, look at that bloody fish. What the hell is that in there? Look at it. I'm going to have to scoop it out. How the hell's that got in there? I don't even know what it is. Let's get a scoop and see if we can find out what it is. Where the hell was that? Oh, damn. Look at that. I couldn't have tried that. couldn't have done that if I bloody tried. Now, where is it? I'm going to have to catch it again in a minute. Looked like a uh, Moscow. I reckon it might have dropped down from the tank up here. Oh, well. With the weather being a little bit warmer, the 20 odd degrees, the tanks, if they drop down in there, they'll survive fine until winter comes. Uh, Blue Dream Shrimp in there with my Gold Madaka. Cherry Black with my Platinum Madaka. Those smaller ones are all bred by myself. And a couple of the older ones are dying off now, the bigger ones back there, because uh, they're just getting older. And just got to wait for the young ones to come through. I have not got anything from my tiger 
Madaki yet. Let's pick it up, see if we can see anything on the mop. Nothing at all. When I do see something, they get put down in these little bins here. These are black Madaka. I haven't got anything. Only thing I've got this year so far, some from the uh, golden here, a couple. Uh, now, I don't know if the shrimp are knocking the eggs over or simply the water just is not getting warm enough for them. So, it could be a combination of both of them at the moment. No, nothing at the moment. As I said, I'd like the temperature to get a little, little bit warmer. Um, so, there's just your swell filter and your fire filter and your sump, and it all just returns. Around the breeders. I went through these before. These pens just hold the selling shrimp that's green and yellows in there and reds and all that goody stuff. Now I saved that water when I emptied out all those five litre tubs there that had mops in this morning and changed the mops over when I miss out on any baby. So I'll leave them in there and then in a couple of days I'll put a torch in there and see if I've missed any babies. Um, Blackmore breeders, let's see the mops in. There'll be a storm coming up soon, so. And what do we got? Oh, look, the pep. There, there they go, all the little peppers. They've done really well so far, the peppercories for myself. Um, this is a Blackmore mop. I don't know if we've got any fry yet. Maybe. Is that one there? No, nothing just yet. And there is some excess ones left from batches before. We got Aranda mops in there, gonna hatch out. Yumbel ones in there. I've just put in a big spawn of um, bristle nose in there that have hatched out. Um, and there's some young Arandas in there. They've gotta be taken out because there's some younger ones in there, real little fry that need to grow up but the bigger ones will get the food. There's some marble placos. Some yum bow babies will be in there. These are the common placos. There was two spawns put in there, so some are a little bit bigger than others down there. You can see how well these plants are growing, have a look. There are the lights that I put in. I'm going to have to put some more over there, I reckon. And maybe another one coming back the other way there too. So this is a grow out area for the bigger placos. You can see zipping along there. But I think I need to get rid of a heap of these snails because I think they're out competing because some of the baby placos have dropped off a bit. I think the uh, snails are out competing for the food, so. Yes. Before we have a look at the shrimpies, we'll uh, these are my umbau breeders. Come on. I lost one a few weeks ago. It was a female. They just chased her to death. That wasn't good. If I see that early enough, I normally get them out. butterfly telescope. I'm hoping they're just starting to get a little bit lively now. So I'm really hoping, I have not had any spawns. I haven't had a butterfly telescope spawn in over 12 months I reckon. Just things haven't worked out well for me there. Um, now I'm going to see how these giant Danio go running with some pill scales. Yes, I know everybody's going to say about the food, and they will outcompete, get the food a lot quicker. So I'll just have to manage that and see how we go. I might put some sinking pellets in and some flakes. 
So maybe the Danny O's will go for the flakes and leave the sinking pellets alone. But I've just bring in four pearl scales that I bred from out in the ponds, bring out for future breeders. You can see that huge big one there. That was the last one left of all my old ones. This is my mutt shrimp. What do we got? Crystal blacks. They should be popping some more babies out very shortly, hopefully. Temperatures popping up a bit. I don't heat my tanks. I know I could get a lot more if I heat them, I know that. So, can you see the little uh, babies there? Finally got some crystal red babies. Been waiting for ages. Right, now, I'm gonna show everybody and everybody jumps up and down when I do. It's to do with stability. They say you gotta do this and you gotta do that with shrimp. The biggest thing is keeping things stable. Now, there's baby shrimp in there and crystal blacks and crystal reds aren't as easy as like your normal cherry shrimp. Now I'm gonna show you the TDS. See that? 480, doesn't bother them at all. And the thing is, the reason I've got them used to that water, if you come and buy shrimp from me, that many people talk about, oh, my shrimp died, because they don't acclimate them properly or their water condition's different. But if you buy shrimp from me and you're in this area, my shrimp are bred and kept in water that's similar to your own. So it's a fair chance they're not gonna die. Orange eye blue tigers, the same. Water parameters are the same. Uh, cherry blacks, there's loads in there, but they're just hard to see, little babies everywhere. Golden yellows. Orange shrimp. Tangerine tigers, haven't seen them for a while. I think they died off. I'll have to investigate that, what's in that tank. They might be there, I only had a few left anyway. Um, there's the cherry reds and that in there. And I thought they'd died off, but there's a couple of little babies of the golden bee. And these are my babies that I've bred. Uh, there's crystal blacks in there. I don't know if you can see them. Let's come around this way. They're adult size, ready to breed now that I've bred myself. Um, some Rancho and Rokens in here. A couple of rogue and white ones and a ranchu. I'm going to use that ranchu. I'll bring it in from outside so I can uh, get it to um, see if I can uh, get some spawning going. You add an extra fish to your colony sometimes, um, they'll uh, spur something to get going. So then you've got your blue dream and some yellow in there. And over here, I'm trying something different. Um, some platies, I have to get some of them out because there's about 10 in there. I only probably need four, three or four in there. It's too small area, I'll have to get them out. Um, but that's some Java moss I'm trying to get going. I just put an air stone in there just to get uh, a bit more happening. This light here, unsure if that's any good. Uh, Java moss seems to be going okay. I don't know about my uh, uh, mosaics, uh, I've just put an air stone in there and it's actually uprooted one of my plants so it might be too uh, severe, I'll just adjust that down. I only just wanted a tiny little bit for it, just to watch, stop the water from going yuck. Um, right, this is Sylvania. Minimum, and then we've got two uh, red tailed gold snakeskin females, and hiding under there is a blue Moscow male. So I'm just going to cross them while they're in there, and a little bit of ribbon, lace ribbon, or whatever they call it, under there, and see how that goes. Right, um, now this was a bit of a score. It's like a, a half yellow guppy they had in uh, one of the, uh, what we call the big box stores, or it was actually Pets Domain. 
and they only sell the males all the time. But when I had a look, I could see out of about 10 males, there was one female. It looked similar, but it was definitely a female. So I took one male and that female, and I can see if I can get a bit of a line going. There was, they're a nice yellow colour. You won't be able to see them all. Maybe back over in that corner. There they are down there, it's a bit hard to see. Now these are long Findanios that I brought recently. I just put them in here. This is the guppy grass I'm going to try to get going, which is surviving all right under this light. So we'll see how we go. Red root floaters are in here. I haven't got many, I'm trying to get that going. And there's some uh, bamboo, which is a uh, just lays down in the water. It's just a floating bamboo trying to get that going and I'm not going to uh, show you too much of outside we might do an outside video with the ponds and all that but I'm trying to get some uh, uh, frog bit and some uh, water lettuce going if you have a look the water lettuce has got new shoots on it and dropping off all the old stuff and so is a frog bit so I might be able to get that going I'll bring out a little bit of guppy grass and java moss out here and see what happens all right so that's a little bit of an overview. I don't know if I'm gonna be expanding or building much more. I, I, I'm, I think it'll be a lot of refining of what I do. Um, try to get the breeding happening a lot more. Try to get a bit money back that I've put into the situation. But I definitely wanna get this wall happening. I think that'd be absolutely great if it even comes up half a metre. Um, yeah, so. And some of the pophos is growing. Look at this, starting to grow up. Bit of Swiss cheese there. You've heard of uh, Chain of Hearts, have you? This one's called the Chain of Spades. Got little plants growing up through there too. Um, that's another one poking out there. That's another little uh, creeping plant. This was called a, we had a, uh, a Xanadu, but this is a Shrek Shalangrila. A Shangrila. Even there. Everybody knows peace lilies do fantastic in here. So, and there's. Uh, that was an expensive plant, that. But the dog got to it, so my wife gave it to me to see if I can get it going. And there's another expensive one. Some of these plants are starting. To do some stuff uh, I think I'll show you one last plant before I go uh, it was a bit more expensive too that my wife gave me because um, yeah, bloody dog got into her plant area and nearly wiped out all her plants and she's not happy so one day she'll come down here and pinch a lot of mine look at these she's growing well Swiss cheese or monkey face whatever you want to call it that's another one there that wasn't cheap either, I know that. Some of them here grow really nicely now and it helps uh, keep the water clean, you know. All right. This is uh, Jeff from Goldfish with Ghost Aquariums. Remember that uh, code is GHOST10 for Frenzy Fish Feeds. Um, jump on board and please comment tell me what content you like if you like it or you don't like it or what you want to see or you want to talk about i do have a bit of a talk coming up very shortly i've done it a while ago again on the definition of cold water fish because i cannot believe normally youtubers we don't say much about each other but some of them do videos please go and have a look online of the videos of the top 10, top 20, top 30 cold water fish. And they'll put in there 20 degrees. That's not a cold water fish in my eyes. A cold water fish does not require a heater in my eyes. A cold water fish is not a fish that lives in your house without a heater, but you pay for electricity to keep the temperature around 23 degrees. And you go, oh, well, I don't use a heater. No, that's not. It's still getting naturally heated from your house. All right, so we'll have a talk about that in the next week. If you would like that, please comment and let me know. But please subscribe, share, comment, and 
enjoy another great year to come in 2024. See you later.